Ketu brother and sister Nadama. Uh, welcome to our monthly Dharma talk. Today's topic is the Buddha's teaching on anger management. We are grateful to have with us an esteemed Dharma speaker who is a consultant, psych psychiatrist, and mindfulness-based therapist at Sunway Medical Center. He is the developer of Mindfulness Gym and Malaysian Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction and Wellness Program. Today, he has conducted more than 100 talk workshops related to mindfulness. Besides being an AB speaker, he's also a prolific writer. He's also the president of the KL Buddhist Mental Health Association. Brother and sister, let us now invite Dr. Pang Chengka to begin his talk. Over to you, Brother Pang. Thank you very much, Brother Meng Sheng, for the very nice introduction. So, he, so Kihotu, good evening to all brothers and sisters. So tonight's sharing is uh, entitled The Buddha's Teaching on uh, Anger Management. Uh, I think this topic is very uh, timely. As you have probably noticed uh, during the pandemic, more and more people are getting angry upset and uh, frustrated, you know? And there's also the worldwide increase in the incidence of uh, domestic violence. Yeah, so this is a very timely talk. Uh, thanks for inviting me for the Dharma sharing. Uh, it's quite some time since I last uh, did some Dharma sharing in BMS. Uh, M. This is my mom. She's uh, 70 plus. I would like to dedicate uh, uh, this talk to her, wishing her a long life, uh, good health and uh, happiness. And of course, uh, in conjunction with uh, Cheng Beng, uh, I also would like to dedicate the uh, merits accrued from tonight's sharing to my uh, late dad. Yeah. So tonight's talk is, uh, is entitled Anger Management. Although the, the word anger management is used, uh, uh, but for those of you who want to know how to how to forgive or how to let go of grudge or how to be patient, uh, uh, the content of tonight's sharing will be relevant as well. Uh? Mm. So anger is one of the three mental poisons in Buddhism together with greed and delusion. Uh, in Pali, uh, you probably know it's called dosa. Uh, and in the... Buddhist view of life, uh, anger is represented by a snake. Uh, one of the three poisons is represented by the snake. And in the story, Journey to the West, one of my favorite story, uh, Journey to the West, which is uh, inspired by the true story of uh, a Buddhist pilgrimage story uh, of the master uh, Swang Chang. Actually, anger is represented by the monkey. Uh, in view of life, is represented by snake, and in the story journey of the West, is rep represented by the monkey. Uh, so, what is anger? Instead of defining and describing anger to you, I would like to show you the video clips from this movie known as uh, Inside Out, whereby anger is one of the main characters. So, let's uh, watch this uh, video clip. Wait, did he just say we couldn't have dessert? Wait, did he just say we couldn't have dessert? That's anger. He cares very deeply about things being fair. So that's how you want to play it, old man? No dessert? Oh, sure. We'll eat our dinner right after you eat this. Ah! Right, right. Here comes an airplane. Ah! You like to read minds, babe? I got something for you to read wait, right wait, wait, wait. here. Let's just be calm for one second. That's it. No, no, no. Read. Find your happy place. That worked. Well, what would you do if you're so smart? I tell you, but you're too dumb to understand. What? Of course your tiny brain is confused. Guess I'll just have to dumb it down to your level. Sorry I don't speak moron as well as you, but let me try. Duh. 
Yeah, so that's the uh, anger, one of the three ill roots, uh, mental poisons in Buddhism. Uh, I would like to highlight that from a Buddhist perspective, uh, anger is actually a visitor. Uh, so from a Buddhist perspective, we are inherently pure. All of us have the, the, the bodhicitta. Anger is not a part and parcel of our psyche. It's just like the like COVID virus. COVID virus is not part of our body. Similarly, the anger is not part of our mind. It's a visitor. And this has an implication uh, because uh, in my clinic, by the way, I'm a psychiatrist. Uh, so this topic is also a special interest to me because I see lots and lots of people with anger issues in my clinic. Uh, so knowing that anger is a visitor, is not inherently part of us, has certain implication. Uh, because a lot of people I notice that uh, people are angry at their anger. Uh, angry at their anger, they hate their anger, uh, and that makes the anger uh, worse. Uh, so if you can reflect according to what the Buddha say, anger is just a visitor, it's not part of us. If you can just calm down, cool down, uh, then, then anger will, will just leave us. Uh, anger is, an, is, is a virus, anger is a contaminant, it's not part of us, it's a visitor. Okay, so I was at the, the video just now. Yeah, so that's uh, anger. I mentioned that uh, anger is a visitor. In anger is not inherently part of us. Yeah, I, I move on to talk about the three types of uh, anger, three types of anger personality. Uh, so the Buddha talks about three types of anger personality. The rock anger personality, soil anger personality, and the water anger uh, personality. Yeah. So for a person with rock anger personality, the, the person's anger is like words written on rocks. So the anger lasts for a very long time and that can be life after life. Okay? The second type of uh, anger personality is a soil, pers uh, soil anger personality. A person with this kind of anger personality, the anger only lasts for a moderate amount of time, not as bad as the first one. And the third type of anger personality is known as the water anger personality. Uh, for these type of people, uh, they rarely get angry. Even if they get angry, uh, the, the anger actually doesn't last for a, a very long time. Yeah, so these are the three types of anger personality. Of course, we, uh, we, try, we try to uh, be like the third type, the water type of anger personality, so that, uh, so that we don't get angry easily. Even if we get angry, uh, even if we get angry, so it doesn't last a very long time. Hmm. There's also this simile of the snake to classify uh, our anger personality. Remember earlier I showed you in the uh, Buddhist view of life, uh, the anger is actually re represented by a snake. Yeah. Hmm. So in this simile, again, there are four types of snakes representing four types of anger personality. Okay. The first type of snake uh, is the worst one. This kind of snake it strikes very fast and is a uh, very poisonous. Uh, for people with this kind of anger personality, they get angry very easy and the anger lasts for a very, very long time. The second type of snake, uh, second type of snake is strikes very fast, but it's not poisonous. Uh, it's not venomous, not poisonous. Uh, so for people with this kind of anger personality, they get, very ang they get angry very easily, but it doesn't last a very long time. They can cool down very fast. Then the third type of uh, anger personality, the third type of uh, snakes, this type of snake is strikes very slow, but it's very poisonous. Uh, so people with this kind of personality, uh, oh, they are very cool, they don't get angry easily, but if you manage to make them angry, uh, the anger will last a very, very, very long time. Uh, of course, uh, we have the fourth type of snake. Uh, uh, this is the best one. Uh, I think this is a Buddhist snake. This kind of snake is strikes very slow, and it's not poisonous. Uh, that means very difficult to make this kind of people angry. Even if they're angry, uh, they can just uh, let go of the anger very fast. Yeah. So as we listen to this, uh, I hope uh, we can reflect uh, and see which type of anger personality we identify uh, with. Uh, of course, uh, as a Buddhist, we should aim for the, the last type. Uh, snake which strike very slow uh, and not poisonous. Yeah. Don't get angry easily, but if you get angry, can let go easily. 
we all know that anger is unhealthy physically, mentally, and uh, spiritually. That's why the Buddha always encourages us to abandon anger. So in the Dhammapada, verse 5, the Buddha mentioned that hatred is never appeased by hatred in the world. By non-hatred alone is hatred appeased. This is the law, uh, this is the eternal law. Uh, and sometimes it's reverted uh, to reverted uh, in the in the left language. It says that anger can never be overcome by anger, only by loving kindness. Uh, that anger can uh, uh, appease. Uh, here are three interesting non-Buddhist quotes. Uh, Non-Buddhist quotes are to remind us on the danger of uh, anger, physically, mentally, and uh, uh, spiritually. The first one comes from Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, it says, for every minute you are angry, you lose 60 seconds of happiness. Very true, isn't it? Uh, another good one from Mahama Gandhi. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Very, very nice saying, uh, very inspirational saying to remind us of the danger of anger. And the last one, anger is only one letter short of danger. Yeah? Danger, you take out the D, you have anger. Yeah? Very nice saying, isn't it? To remind us the importance of letting go of uh, anger. Hmm. Interestingly, the Buddha approves one type of burning and one type of killing for good sleep and peace of mind. Yeah, of course, the, the, the Buddha discouraged killing, but in the Sutta, this is found in the Jatva Sutta and Gatva Sutta, the Buddha says that one type of killing is acceptable. What kind of killing? It's the killing of uh, anger, and there's one type of burning which is acceptable, which is the burning of anger, and they help us to have good sleep and peace of uh, mind. This is another saying from the Buddha related to, uh, oh, uh, to anger management. Uh, he abused me, he struck me, he overpowered me, he robbed me. Those who harbor such thoughts do not steal their hatred. I think all of us know the importance of subduing anger. I think the more important part is how, how do we do that, which is the focus on uh, tonight's uh, sharing, our focus on the how. So step number one, in order to overcome anger, we need to be, be, be mindful of our anger. We need to recognize that anger has a reason. Huh? Uh, and to do this, we can use the, the ancient wisdom of mindfulness plus a modern psychotherapy tool known as the Padersky hot cross bun. Uh, Padersky hot cross bun. Uh, so what we do is uh, in, in this method, uh, we divide anger, anger, which is an emotion. Uh, we divide anger into anger emotions, anger thoughts, anger behavior, and anger bodily sensations. I think most of the time we relate anger as an emotion, which is true, anger is an emotion, but very often anger also comes with certain thoughts, certain behavior, and certain body sensation. And often this is triggered by certain situation. Uh, I think this is a very useful tool to uh, help us to be mindful of our anger pattern. And this can be different for different people. Right? For some people, the anger is more of thoughts, a lot of cursing. For some people, the anger is more of behavior. They, they may uh, scold people, they may bang the table, they may throw things, uh, it's more of behavior. For some people, the anger is more of bodily sensation. Uh, for example, the heart pounding or the shortness of breath. Uh, for some people, they just experience more of emotion. Uh, so it's important for, for us to be mindful of our typical anger system and try to identify the usual situation. What kind of situation usually uh, triggers us? Huh? Yeah. So step one of anger management is be mindful of our signature anger systems and the situation that usually trigger the anger. The second step is we, we need to be willing to let go of anger. Uh, the first step is recognize that anger has a reason. The second step is we need to be willing to let go of anger out of compassion. Uh, there's this uh, very nice saying here, which is uh, uh, based on the saying by the, based on the saying in Visu Dibanga, composed by Buddha Gosa. So it says, holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else you are the one who gets burned, which is very true. Yeah? Uh, so very often in when you're angry, uh, 
we want to retaliate, we want to, we want to argue, we want to hurt the other person. Uh, actually, the right thing to do is to let go of anger. When we let go of anger, it doesn't mean that we approve a person's uh, wrongdoing. This is very, very important. Uh, when we try to let go of anger, it doesn't mean we approve the person's wrongdoing. We need to let go of anger so that we don't hurt ourselves because anger uh, burns us. Uh, mm. So second step is be willing to let go. Uh, if you do not know how to let go, uh, it's okay. At least make an aspiration. Be willing to let go uh, anger knowing that it's harmful, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Then the third step, uh, third step is uh, slow, deep micro breathing. Uh, so I strongly suggest to uh, take a few slow, deep micro breathing to relax the body and calm the mind. This is very, very important. Uh, how to do slow, deep uh, micro breathing? Uh, there are many ways to do that. I will demonstrate uh, one way. So one way of doing it is this way. So we breathe in. Then we breathe out. Breathing through the nose. Breathe out through the mouth. Try to let the out breath be a bit longer. Breathe in through the nose. Breathe out through the mouth. And sometimes you can also do it uh, with a Qigong style. Uh, Qigong style is uh, the, the same method that I showed you just now, but we synchronize it with some hand movement. So breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Uh, in through the nose, out through the mouth. As we breathe out, we let go of the tension, the anger energy, we let go of the tension. And we can also do a little bit of visualization. Very often when I do that, like, I imagine I'm a body tree. Uh, I imagine a body tree, so I'm breathing. So I'm like a body tree. Uh, of course, uh, we can do the mindful breathing with some affirmation as well. So if we put in some uh, Buddhist mantra, or Buddhist affirmation, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, uh, adopt something uh, recommended by the Vietnamese Zen master, Venerable Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, so in the while doing the mindful breathing, when we breathe in, we can say anger has a reason. Say in the heart. When we breathe in, say anger has a reason. When we breathe out, we say anger is not me. Remember just now I say anger is a visitor. Anger is a virus. Uh, anger is not inherently part of us. Huh? When we breathe in, we say anger is unpleasant. When we breathe out, we remind ourselves this shall also pass. It will pass. Breathing in, I'm calm. Breathing out, I'm strong. Yeah. So this is the third method. Slow, deep, and mindful breathing. This helps to relax the body and calm the mind. Yeah. So remember the three basic steps. I've uh, introduced to you the three uh, basic steps. Huh? So first one is uh, be mindful of anger. Recognize that anger has risen. Second one, be willing, willing to let go of anger. And of course, the third one is to do slow, deep mindful breathing to relax the body and calm the mind. Okay. Um, once we are, our mind is calmer, Ah, then let's explore more of the Buddha's advice on how to overcome uh, anger. Uh, I, I like the Buddha's teaching because uh, in the Buddha's teaching, there are many, many stories, many, many inspirational sayings and techniques uh, they can use to overcome uh, anger and apply actually a lot of the Buddha's teaching in my clinic. Of course, I make it uh, uh, generic, uh, non non Buddhist, uh, but, but a lot of principles I actually learn from the Buddha's teaching. So the, the next, I'm going to show you another five ways to overcome anger. And this comes from the Anguttara Nikaya, uh, from the Agatha Vinaya Sutta, Anguttara Nikaya, Book of the Five, uh, the numerical is called. So Book of the Five, this got five methods. Uh. Uh, so in this uh, sutta, the Buddha mentioned venerable monks. A monk should use these five methods to completely get rid of hate when he has a reason toward anyone. What five? Because this uh, sutta was directed to monks, but all the principles are also useful uh, for laymen like us as well. So the methods are number one, loving kindness, number two, compassion, 
Number three, equanimity. key. Number four, pay no attention. And number five, reflect on karma. Uh, so I'll go through with you one by one. I will expand on the points. Okay. So the first one is loving kindness. Okay. Loving kindness means uh, friendliness. So how do we apply friendliness in anger management? Uh, one of the ways, there are several ways. One of the ways is to focus on the good aspects of a person. Uh, uh, so to make this, uh, this practice more, more the practical, uh, you got to recall someone who you dislike, to make it more real. Uh, see if you can recall someone who you dislike. Uh, then practicing loving kindness means uh, we learn to focus on the good aspects of a person. Uh, very rarely we see a person who is to to totally bad, totally horrible, to uh, everything that we don't like. Uh, so we focus on something that uh, we like about the person. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, you may not like your boss. Uh, you may not buy a, 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 your boss because he uh, has a very bad temper. He gets angry easily. Uh, he may not be a good boss, but he may be good in other things. Uh, uh, maybe he's a good father at home. Maybe he's a, a good husband at home. He may not be a good uh, boss. Yeah. So in, in, in basically, we try to focus on the good aspect of a person. Uh, of course, this requires some training. There's the interesting practice uh, of the Babimba tribe in Africa. A uh, very interesting tribe. In this particular tribe in Africa, uh, when someone has done something wrong, uh, instead of punishing the person with anger, as much as usually we do, isn't it? Uh, we want to punish people when somebody has done something wrong, we, we punish the person. But in this tribe, uh, they're very special because instead of punishing, they forgive and focus on the good aspect of the person. Uh, so someone has done wrong, instead of getting angry and, for, uh, and uh, uh, punishing the person, uh, they have this ceremony, they will actually surround the person and everybody will say something good about this person to remind the goodness of this person. Uh, so that's related to loving kindness, friendliness. We focus on the good aspect of the person. Uh, even though there's certain aspect of this person that we don't like, we focus on the part that we like about this person, which is pleasant. Besides focusing on the good aspect of a person, we can also practice loving kindness by positive wishing or, or meta meditation. Uh, in fact, just uh, before we started this talk, uh, Bhante Mahinda guided us on, uh, on meditation. Uh, actually, this is a very powerful way to overcome uh, anger. In one of the Buddhist stories related to loving kindness, uh, the Buddha tamed a drunkard elephant by radiating loving kindness and positive thoughts to the elephant. Yeah, I, I find this story very inspiring. Actually, in my clinic, uh, I have a baby elephant, a pink color baby elephant in my clinic uh, to remind me of the, the Buddha's teaching, the inspirational stories of how we came the, the elephant uh, using the power of loving kindness. Yeah, uh, those of you who have been to my clinic, uh, uh, so now you, you know why I keep the baby elephant there, a very cute baby elephant. Uh. Yeah. yeah, so practicing loving kindness meditation is one way. Uh, but tonight, I will share with you uh, a creative way of radiating loving kindness. Uh, this is something that uh, I, I came up with. Uh, a, more, a more dynamic way of practicing uh, loving kindness, which is in form of singing the Rasa Sayam song, Buddhist version. Okay, so what's a uh, Rasa Sayam song, Buddhist version? Uh, so this is the song I have composed, adapted from the folk song Rasa Sayam but I changed the lyrics a bit uh, so that it's more Buddhistic, it's more metaphor. Uh, so I read to you the lyrics. Uh, uh, rasa sayang A, rasa sayang sayang A, A, may I, may you, may all be happy, happy, happy. Uh, so I changed the lyrics so that it's more metaphor. Okay, so how do we sing that? I will, I will sing to you. Rasa sayang, hey, rasa sayang, sayang, hey, hey, may I, may you, may all be happy, happy, happy. May I, may you, may all be happy, happy, happy. So as I'm singing the song, I read it loving kindness to everyone. Uh, it's similar to the meta meditation, but this is more dynamic. You can do it anytime, anywhere. Uh, in fact, every morning when I, when I check into the hospital, uh, after I check in with the Mind Sejatura 
app. Uh, uh, so when I when they take the stairs to my clinic or when they take a lift, uh, I'll be I'll be singing this song. Of course, in my heart, I don't I don't sing it aloud, uh, but I'll be singing it in my in my heart, and I send loving kindness thoughts to all the people in the hospital, all the doctors, all the nurses, and all the assistants. Uh, and to make it more unconditional, uh, I sing it in different version. So there's also a Mandarin version. Rasa sayang, eh, rasa sayang, sayang, eh, eh, to what to mean to Tatia King and Jen Kang Kwai. There also there's a BM version, uh, BM version, you know, Saya Ujap Kan Se Hasla Matsa Jatara. Also can be in Pali version. Sape Sata Bawan to Suki Ita Ata. Yeah, so we really kindness. Uh, so this is a very powerful. We charge up ourselves with the power of loving kindness. It's a very powerful antidote to uh, anger and uh, hatred. Yeah. One of the commonly asked questions I have uh, uh, when, I, when I talk about uh, using loving kindness to overcome anger, uh, one of the commonly asked questions is people ask, uh, how do we radiate loving kindness uh, to people who we hate, people who we dislike? Uh, the answer to that question is we don't, we don't, uh, we don't. Uh, what I mean by we don't, uh, we don't start by reading loving kindness to someone we hate. Uh, so you're going to do it slowly. Uh, Radiating loving kindness is like, to me, it's like workout, eh? workout, it, but it's more a mental workout. But just like in physical workout, when you go for jogging, uh, you don't straight away run for 10 kilometers. You start slow, one kilometer, two kilometers. Uh, so when we radiate loving kindness, when we sing the Russell Sayang song, same thing. Radiate loving kindness to people we are grateful to, people who we care for. Uh, start with that. Uh, then let the power of metal grow. Uh, when you grow and grow and grow, they will come to a time of, uh, then it can become quite easy for us uh, to radiate loving kindness to people that we dislike. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move to the second method. Remember, Anguttara Nikaya, book of the five means got five methods. Uh. First one was loving kindness, friendliness. This one is the second one is related to the first one, but it's, it's on compassion. Uh, co uh, um, compassion. Okay. In, uh, in compassion, in using compassion to subdue anger, we try to perceive, we try to perceive that the person who is angry is actually suffering or sick or need help. Uh, most of the time, we don't think that way, you know. When we are facing someone very angry, we only, oh, you're trying to hurt me, you're trying to harm me, you're trying to make it difficult for me. Uh, it doesn't occur to us uh, that the person who is angry is actually suffering. Uh, so using compassion to overcome anger is basically tuning our mind so that we can perceive an angry person is actually a sick person, someone who is suffering. Uh, let me read to you what uh, Venerable Thich Nhat Hanh says. When you look deeply into your anger, you will see that the person you call your enemy is also suffering, sick, suffering. As soon as you see that, the capacity for accepting and having compassion for them is there. Uh, that's exactly what the Buddha means. Okay. Another one, same by Venable Thich Nhat Hanh. When another person makes you suffer, it is because he suffers deeply within himself and his suffering is spilling over. He does not need punishment. He needs help. So I think the moment we can see actually the angry person is suffering, uh, uh, our anger will also uh, automatically tone down. Yeah. So as I, as I told you, I'm a psychiatrist in my clinic. I see many, 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 many people with uh, anger. Uh, but I see it that way. I don't see that they're angry at me. I see that they're sick. Uh, many, many, many mental health conditions are like depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, bipolar, and many, many mental health conditions. Anger actually is part of it. Uh, anger, irritability, frustration is actually part of the mental health condition. So I don't see them as being angry at me. I see them that they are sick, they need help. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I run a clinic, a psychiatric clinic, and one of the mental health conditions that I often see in my clinic is clinical depression. Uh, depression. Uh, many people, when they hear the word depression, uh, they think the person is sad. Uh, there's only half of the truth. Many people who are sad, uh, they're also angry. Is that being, being angry, irritable, frustrated, 
is one of the uh, one of the symptoms of depression. Uh, so depression not necessarily be sad. Depression can be angry as well. Uh, so maybe some of your friends, family members, when you see them very angry, uh, maybe they're suffering from anxiety, suffering from uh, depression. Uh, so if you are interested to read more about uh, depression, uh, you can go to this ebook, which I've just uh, the I've just returned the. Uh, the, actually, this is an expanded edition. Uh, you can use this uh, QR code if you get access to this ebook. I'm still human, understanding depression with uh, times. Okay, the next method, number three. Uh, uh, so, number one is loving kindness, friendliness, focus on the good aspect of the person. Number two is uh, compassion, uh, learn to perceive the person is suffering and need help. And number three is pay no attention. Uh, sometimes number one and number two uh, can be a bit difficult. Sometimes number three uh, can be more, can be easier. Uh. Sounds simple, just pay no attention. Uh, basically, it means to distract ourselves with useful activities. Simple, but it can be quite useful. Yeah. Uh, uh, but of course, the, the distraction method must be useful. Like if you distract with alcohol, distract, distract with the uh, with the computer game, distract with drugs. Then, then of course it's not a helpful way of distracting. But if we can distract ourselves with something meaningful, uh, running my clinic, uh, run dharma duta activities, doing voluntary work, those are healthy distraction. Even a very simple method. Uh, instead of trying to change the way we think, uh, which is quite difficult, uh, just shift our attention to uh, meaningful activities. Mm. However, I need to I, I need to uh, give a little bit of warning. Uh, 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 if, if we shift our attention to other activities and then the, the issue is over. Sometimes the, an issue uh, may appear very big. We feel a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, a lot of resentment, but it, it will pass. Then we go and do some other thing. When we come back to it, the, the matter appears very small. Uh, uh, then we are on the right track. Uh, but sometimes uh, after we do the activities, we come back to it, uh, the problem is still there. Uh, and one of the situation in when it comes to marital issues, uh, in my clinic, uh, I seen I do see couples with marital issues, so interpersonal problem, marital issues. Uh, so in the context of marital issues, uh, uh, sometimes just pay no attention that uh, may not be helpful. Uh, maybe it's helpful just for a little while. Okay, she will attention after we pull, pull down, we need to go back to the issue. Uh, we shouldn't just uh, 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 ignore. Hmm? So that is the uh, pay no uh, attention. Hmm. Uh, of course, related to pay no attention uh, is to basically to, to, to stay calm, to ignore and not to quarrel with the person. When a person is in an angry state of mind, uh, actually trying to reason with them, trying to argue actually doesn't work. Uh, it's better to just stay calm and just ignore. Uh, let the person calm down first. After the person has calmed down, then we can talk about it. Mm. Uh, so that's basically a method of pay no attention. Just shift our attention to meaningful activities or just ignore for a moment, keep calm, let the person calm down, they only need to talk. Mm. Mm. Uh, related to this method, I have this uh, very interesting story which I learned uh, uh, from the Buddha's teaching called the Vepa Chitti Sutta. Uh, Vepa Chitti Sutta. Uh, interestingly, uh, 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 once the Buddha told this story that the Devas, the Devas and the Asuras, Devas and the Asuras, they were fighting. Uh, and the king of the demons, the Asuras, uh, his name was Vepachiti. So the, the, this sutta is named after the king of the uh, demons, uh, Vepachiti. And they, they were actually basically the quarreling, they were at war. Uh, and to cut the story short, uh, uh, of course the Deva won won the, the, the war, uh, and this Vepachiti was captured. Uh, the demon Depa, uh, Vepachiti was captured and uh, sent to the king of the Devas, uh, which is the Lord Saka. Uh, but this uh, Vepachiti uh, was still very angry. You know? Even he was captured, uh, he was scolding and scolding and scolding, scolding with a lot of harsh words uh, uh, to the king of the Dewa. Mm. So one of the charioteers, one of the Mahzaya, the charity of, uh, of the Lord Saka is like, uh, cannot tahan uh, what he saw, you know. Uh, 
capture already, I still keep on scolding, scolding, scolding the lots. Uh, so the, the, the charity, uh, his name was Matali. Uh, he asked the Lord Sakai, asked the king of Udeva, why, why you keep quiet? Uh? Why you keep quiet like that? Are you scared of him? Are you scared of the demon? Uh, guess what the king, uh, Lord Sakai said. Uh, so Lord Sakai said, no, 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 no. I'm, actually not, I'm not scared of him. I'm not scared of him. The reason I keep quiet uh, because I don't want to argue with a fool. If I argue with a fool, uh, I'm a fool. Only a fool will argue with a fool. Uh, so I'm, I'm, it's like I'm, I'm Buddhist. I follow the Buddhist teaching. So I don't want to argue with the That's why I kept it. Uh, but then uh, the Matali uh, uh, still was not convinced. I said, so you're going to leave him just, just shout and scream and do like this. Or you're going to leave him like that. No? Cannot that. Uh, he will think you're scared of uh, him. He may tell other people you're scared of him. Uh, but since we capture him already, uh, why not we, we, we just kill him uh, and get rid of him once for all? Uh? Yeah. So the Matali was suggesting that. Of course, uh, 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 King Saka was very patient. Uh, he didn't do that. He said, no, 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 no that's not the way. Uh, we cannot overcome anger by anger. By, by anger, only the loving kindness. Right? Yeah. So basically, the, the take-home message of the story uh, is we remind ourselves uh, not to argue with people who are, who are angry. When you're in the angry state, uh, uh, very often talking logic actually doesn't really work. Uh, you want to argue with them, you don't get it. Uh, in fact, it will make things worse. Make things worse for ourselves and make things worse for the, the other person. The, the better way is to just uh, uh, keep quiet, uh, be patient, be mindful, calm down. Uh, then later, uh, maybe when the person has cooled down already, uh, uh, then maybe we can do something to, to communicate and uh, uh, improve on things. Hmm. So there's this uh, inspirational saying from the Dhammapada that remind us the importance of, uh, of calmness and patience when dealing with someone who is possessed by anger, the anger virus, you know. So this comes from Dhammapada verse 134. If you can keep yourself calm and quiet like a broken gong, which is no longer resonant, you have realized Nibbana, then no anger is found in you. I like this simile, you know. Then the gong, uh, if it's an impact gong, uh, you sound the gong, uh, you vibrate. Uh, but if the, if the gong has a crack, uh, no matter how you hit the gong, uh, it won't reverberate. Uh, yeah. Okay, so just now in the story, uh, uh, of course, the Lord Saka actually kept quiet. Uh, uh, he was silent. Uh, uh, however, in real life, uh, in certain situations, we shouldn't keep quiet. Uh. Uh, for example, in situations of domestic violence. Now, during COVID, there actually lots and lots of domestic violence. No? Uh, when there's a domestic violence, in situation of uh, school bullies and road rage, uh, sometimes we need to protect ourselves. Uh, so we also got to be wise when we apply the Buddhist teaching. Uh, we say, just keep quiet, keep quiet. If people are attacking us, uh, we cannot just keep quiet and keep silent. We have to protect ourselves. Uh, Okay, uh, related to the method number three, uh, which is pay no attention, sometimes uh, we want to help a family member. Uh, we, help, we want to help a friend or family member to cool down. The, the person may not be angry at us. They may be angry at somebody else. Uh, but as, uh, as the Kawayana Mitra, uh, we, we want to help the person to, to cool the flame of anger. Then how do we do that? Uh, so just now, uh, earlier, we wanted to protect ourselves. So we just keep quiet, be patient, not to make uh, things worse. But in this situation, it's slightly different. You want to help a person to cool down. Uh, so how do we do that? Uh, so I have some pointers for you. Yeah? So if you are dealing with someone who is angry, uh, so this is like anger first aid, you know, anger first aid, what you can do to help the person to cool down. Yeah. First of all, we need to stay calm ourselves. Uh, so do some chanting, do for micro breathing, uh, maybe you put your feet flat on the ground, do micro breathing, do some body tree visualization to, to make sure we are calm ourselves. Okay. Then number two, try to listen attentively. Uh, listen attentively, uh, pay close attention, uh, put, a, uh, put our phone aside, uh, listen attentively. We can use this very simple meow formula. I call it the meow formula. Uh. Meow formula is a very simple method for us to give some verbal cue, uh, to give some verbal cue to show that we are paying attention. Uh, so M actually means, mm. so as the person is narrating 
the story uh, why the person is so angry uh. so m is mm, so we knock the head uh. i is oh, i see you're so angry because uh, i see i i see uh. why is yeah yeah we must be frustrating yeah must be frustrating okay a is oh ah now i know why you're so upset uh. O is oh so this all happened to you w is wow okay and the question mark is basically asking some questions to care for the person. Uh, so this uh, helps helps to convey the message that we are paying attention. It also helps the person to express their anger. Mm -hmm. Number three is the empathize. So as we listen, we empathize. Oh, so it must be tough for you. You have to uh, handle so many things. Yeah? If I'm in your shoes, uh, probably I will feel the same thing. Uh, so that is empathy. That's validate. Empathy and validate is different from advising the person. Uh, if we tell you, oh, Barilla, you shouldn't be angry. You shouldn't be angry. Uh, uh, that, that is not empathizing. Tell you shouldn't be angry. Uh, that is giving advice. Uh, if I say, oh, Barilla, wow, you've gone through so much. Uh, it must be difficult. You have so many things on your plate. Uh, well, I think if I'm in your shoe, uh, I'll also be very stressed out. I'll also lose my, my, my temper. That is validation. That is empathy. Hmm? Of course, we can sing the Rasa Sayam song as well. Of course, we don't sing it aloud. We sing it in our heart. A loving kindness meta is a heart practice. Not necessarily we will sing it out, but in my heart, I'll be radiating loving kindness to this person. Yeah. One very important point, don't give unsolicited advice. Yeah. So I, I see this very often, uh, especially among Buddhists also. Uh. Uh, because sometimes Buddhists, uh, after listening to Dharma talk, or this, uh, we always want to give advice, you know. Or we say, oh, very well. Okay, according to what Angutara Nikaya book of the fire, you should be doing this, 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 this. Uh. Uh, very often, this will make a person angle worse. <laughs> uh, uh, so try not to give unsolicited advice. Uh, just uh, listen deeply, listen mindfully. Uh, then the person angle will put up. Then maybe if necessary, then we can offer some advice or suggestion. Uh, very often, that might not be necessary. Uh, because uh, as I mentioned earlier, anger is a visitor. Uh, once it's the things clear already, uh, um, when, when things are already clear, the flame of anger has cooled down. Uh, uh, actually, we know what to do. Uh, so this is uh, some tips on how to help your loved ones to cool their anger. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so the fourth method is on equanimity. So first one is loving kindness, focus on the good aspect of the person. Compassion is ah, try to perceive that the person is suffering and need uh, uh, help. The third one is pay no attention, be patient, pay no attention, don't retaliate, don't argue back. Uh, okay, number four is equanimity. Uh, equanimity. Um, Basically, it's a stay calm. Uh, same thing, we can do some chanting, we can do some mindful breathing, uh, do whatever that you think is useful for you to keep calm. That's one way. Uh, of course, I like meta chanting. Uh, I like meta chanting by Imi Oi. Uh, then the, I noticed also before this session, there was a music. I think Brother Liao or Brother Ming Sheng played the music. I like the music very much as well. It helps to calm the mind. Uh, that's an equanimity. One way of practicing economy is also to ask this, ask, uh, ask ourselves this question uh, and remind ourselves, uh, ask ourselves, what have I learned from the incident and remind ourselves that everything happens with a good purpose. For example, uh, like now the COVID-19, uh, a lot of people are very frustrated. There's a lot of anger, there's a lot of irritation. Uh, uh, so if you apply economy here, uh, then we'll tell ourselves, yeah, COVID-19 is not a nice experience. Nobody likes it. Uh, but we learn certain things as well. Uh, they are sort of blessing in disguise. A uh, blessing in disguise with the COVID, we also learn certain things. Uh, for example, we learn about impermanence. Uh, so we can plan, 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 plan a lot of our Dharma Duta activity. When the COVID strikes, uh, everything has to replan again. So we learn about impermanence. Okay. Uh, in a COVID situation also, uh, in a way, it's not bad because I noticed that uh, during the pandemic and COVID, uh, actually I had more time to meditate and more time to reflect on the Buddha's teaching with the Sutta. Uh, so it might not be a bad thing. Okay, you can contemplate in that way. Uh, you don't get so frustrated. 
Another thing I learned, uh, because of COVID-19, uh, I learned how to give Dharma sharing through Zoom. Uh, of course, still learning like, a lot of hiccups here and there. Just now there was some technical error. It's all part of the learning experience. Uh, these days, it's so easy to reach out. You know? It's Zoom, uh, and you reach out to a few hundreds or even thousands. You know? uh, so, uh, yeah, that's how we cultivate equanimity. Uh, things are not as bad as we think. There are still little, little things that we can grateful, we can be grateful to. There are things that we learn. So that's a reflection on equanimity. Hmm. Uh, another useful way to be equanimous uh, is to remember that nobody is free from blame, including the Buddha. Uh, in the Dhammapada verse 277 and 228, the Buddha said is, none is free from blame. Uh, ancient is this situation or Atula. So the Buddha was talking to Atula. Uh, it's not just true today, People criticize one speaking silently, they criticize one speaking much, and they criticize one speaking moderately. This is, there is no one in the world who is not criticized. Uh, this one, I, I remember this again, again, and again, and again, and again. Uh, actually, every Dhammapada verse, uh, for those of you who are, who are not familiar with Dhammapada, uh, actually, actually, every verse uh, comes with certain stories. Uh, so in the time, uh, it's good to go and read the stories behind uh, Dhammapada words. Uh, for example, this one, uh, it was addressed to Atula. So once uh, Atula and his disciples, uh, they, they went to uh, went to listen, uh, listen to that. They wanted to learn the Dhamma from the Buddha, uh, but they didn't go straight to the Buddha. Uh, initially, they went to this venerable Rewada. Uh, uh, but uh, it didn't turn out as uh, what Atula and his gang expected. Uh because uh, Venerable Revala was a bit unfriendly, uh, a, bit, a bit detached unfriendly. Uh, so they were not happy, they, were, they complained. Uh, then they went to the second reverend, wow, Venerable Sariputta, chief in the wisdom. Uh, so the Venerable Sariputta gave a very lengthy discourse, uh, very detailed, very in-depth, uh, very profound, very chin. Uh, uh, but they were also not happy, you know. They said, too complicated, I don't understand. Too complicated. So difficult to please them, uh, difficult to please Atula and his gang. You know? uh, okay? Then they went to the third monk, uh, guess which was the third monk. It was a venerable Ananda, the Buddha's personal, uh, personal attendant. Uh, of course, uh, uh, venerable Ananda learned the lesson. Uh, he said, uh, too, uh, too short also cannot, uh, too long also cannot. Uh, so he gave something like middle length. Uh. Uh, unfortunately, they were also not happy. So they complained to the Buddha. Uh, there's in, in this context, uh, uh, the Buddha actually uh, mentioned this Dhamma power. None is free from blame. Uh, you read in the Buddhist scriptures that uh, even the Buddha was not free from blame. Mm. And I have practiced this in my clinic. Uh, I've, been in the, I've been a doctor for more than 20 years. Uh, I must say that I, 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 I work, I always try my best. Uh, I'm, I'm not Buddha, I'm not Arahant, I'm not Bodhisattva, but I always try my best uh, to care for my patient. Uh, and I'm happy that over the years, I managed to uh, help many, many people. Uh, but uh, probably you're not sure. There are also people who complain about me. Uh, there are also people who complain, who are not uh, happy. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I give medicine, people also complain. I don't give medicine, people also complain. Uh, I charge too little, people also complain. I charge too much, people also uh, complain. Uh, I give lengthy explanation, very right? thorough, people also complain. I, I, I give short answer, people also complain. Yeah, so I learned, uh, uh, I learned, I uh, keep on reminding myself, uh, cannot please everybody, just try your best. Nobody is free from pain. Mm -hmm. Then, the, uh, then we, we, we can overcome all the anger. Mm -hmm. Another one is uh, also related to economy, uh, equanimity, uh, is by contemplating on that. Contemplating on that. Uh, so in Dhammapada verse uh, 6, the Buddha says that we must all die. Uh, we must all die. People other than wise do not realize we in this world must all die. And not realizing it, continue the quarrels. The wise realize it, and therefore their quarrels cease. Uh, so if you think uh, we're going to die soon, uh, in a way, the pandemic time uh, is a good time to reflect on that. You know? uh, so we don't know when we'll get infected by COVID. We never know when we're going to die. Uh, so time we reflect on death, uh, then uh, we are not so calculative uh, over the little, little things in life. Uh, that's one, uh, uh, that's another way of reflecting. 
on reflection to help us to cultivate uh, equanimity. Mm. We can combine the depth contemplation with mindful walking. Uh, we can com combine depth contemplation with mindful walking. Um, yeah. In fact, the mindful, um, uh, mindful walking or walking meditation, mindful walking or walking meditation um, is, is a very powerful antidote for anger because uh, in the, is the, it's a physical, a physical form of meditation. There's a lot of movement. Uh, so when we are in an angry state, uh, there's a lot of energy, there's too much of energy. So the walking meditation uh, helps to dissipate the uh, energy. Huh? Hmm. Uh, I learned this from Ajahn Brahm. Uh, for Ajahn Brahm, he gave a very uh, interesting mantra as we do walking meditation. Uh, instead of labeling left, right, left, right, left, right, which is the traditional way, uh, he suggested something very interesting. He said, left, mati, right, pasti. Left, mati, right, pasti. Pasti, mati, mati, pasti, pasti, mati, mati, pasti. Uh, basically, it's reminding, uh, reminding us Death can happen anytime. Uh, with that reflection, uh, we, are, we are less calculative. Uh, we lower down our expectation, and that helps to overcome our uh, anger. So, mati, pasti, pasti, mati, anytime, anywhere, sure die, will die, mati, pasti. Uh, that after some time, we go down. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the last method. Uh, this will be one of the last slides, almost uh, 9 30. The last method is to reflect on karma. Uh, reflect on uh, karma. Uh, there are many ways. There are a few ways to do that. Uh, the first one is like what I just know said. Why seek revenge? Karma is going to get is going to get busted everywhere. Uh, so it's one way of reflecting, especially if you find that the anger is very intense. Like you use method number one, number two, number three, number four. Also, don't work. Somehow, we cannot let go. The anger is too much. Uh, maybe you can reflect a little bit. Uh, so, I don't have to go and punish the person. I don't have to do anything to hurt the person. Because if I do anything to harm or hurt the person, uh, it's bad karma for myself. Uh, so, let karma do the job. Uh, so, that is the first way of reflecting. Uh, second way of reflecting is to, uh, to think along this way. Say that maybe it's my karma. Uh, there's a lot of conflict, there's a lot of anger, frustration. Maybe it's my karma. Uh, then we can think, okay, lah. so we, uh, I, I, this will be an opportunity for me to clear my bad karma. Uh, clear, 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 clear all my bad karma. And then uh, hopefully things will be better after this. Uh, so this is the second way of reflecting on karma. Uh, another way of reflecting on karma is to focus on our good karma. Uh, we have, uh, all, of, all of us have our good karma. All of us have a blessing. Uh, so sometimes it's important to focus on the good things in life, focus on a good karma, focus on blessing. Uh, uh, that will automatically dilute the resentment and dilute the, the anger. Uh, so that's the fifth method, uh, reflecting on karma. Mm. One bonus method, uh, also related to a bonus method, uh, is actually to reflect on the causes and conditions. Remember, I showed this slide earlier uh, on the step number one, recognizing anger, be mindful of anger. Uh, I mentioned that uh, we need to recognize our anger as an emotion, anger as thought, anger as behavior, anger as bodily sensation. Uh, to add on that, it's important to recognize the situation. Situation in the Buddhist terminology is the causes and condition. Causes and condition that uh, for that cause our anger to arise. So this is also very important. Sometimes we use the other method, only the anger cool down, but it doesn't solve the problem. So sometimes to solve the problem or prevent the problem from happening, uh, we need to reflect on the causes and conditions. Uh, why the person is angry? Maybe the person is sick. Maybe the person is uh, having menopause. Maybe the person is having depression. Maybe the person is stressed out. Maybe he didn't sleep well. Uh, or maybe the person has a very high expectation. Uh, so for different people, there are different patterns, different causes and conditions, different past conditioning. Uh, so when we relax the body, we calm the mind, uh, it's important to reflect on these causes and conditions. Okay. Mm. 
So with that, I will stop the sharing. I will open for Q&A. Uh, it's 9.30 now. Uh, yes, Madam Brother and sister, you can uh, unmute your mic to ask questions to Dr. Pang. Anything you are not clear. Uh, Dr. Pang, I have a question for one of the members. What is the difference between anger thought versus anger emotion? Okay, anger thought to be something like that. Anger thought is experienced as, as though it's a radio playing in the head. Anger thought. As though it's a radio playing the head, okay? And the thought will be something like that. You shouldn't do that to me. Why you do that to me? It's very unfair for you to do that to me. I didn't harm you. Why you want to do this to me? And why you're doing this again, again, again to me? Why just me? I don't understand. Uh, it's all talking. Uh, there is angry thoughts. It's experience. In the head, it's like a voice, it's like a inner speech. Whereas uh, angry emotion, angry feeling is more of a subjective feeling. It's a subjective feeling of that that subjective uh, feeling. Yeah, that's the answer. Okay. Any other question? I think there's one question. Uh, I think I, I saw one question. Yeah. What does M stand for? Okay, meow. Uh, so meow was taught in the context of uh, mindful listening. Uh, you want to help loved ones to cool down the anger. M is mm, mm, mm. Yeah, it's just nodding the head, acknowledging. Yeah, mm. mm. actually, what you're doing now. Mm. Yeah, M is mm. Mm. And remember when you're doing the meowing. Uh, when they say, mm, I see, um, it doesn't mean that we agree with the person. Not necessarily we agree with the person. We are just conveying the message that I'm paying attention. Uh, I respect you. I'm paying attention. I'm following you. Uh, I'm trying to understand why you're so angry. And hopefully when I listen to you mindfully, I understand I can help you to cool down. In that context, not necessarily I agree with you. Okay, Dr. Pan, there's another question. How how do parents guide the primary three children, the primary three child whose volcano anger probably diagnosed in the lower spectrum of the ADHD? Uh, maybe start with uh, something more something more physical. You see, some of the methods are recommended. Uh, some are more reflective in nature. It's more of training of the mind. Uh, like, for example, uh, the one on the compassion, the one on loving kindness. Uh, you need the mind to focus on the good aspect of the person or to train the mind to, to perceive the person as suffering. That might be a bit too challenging. Maybe start on something more physical, like mindful breathing like singing the Rasa Yang song or my walking. Uh, start with something more physical. I think that would be easier to teach. Uh, of course, by modeling as well. So usually teaching children, uh, sometimes uh, children, they listen to how we live our life more than what we say. You know? uh, so they model us. So we teach by showing that example. That's also another way. Uh, yeah. Okay, next question. How do we how do you prevent anger from emotional backmailing? Anger from emotional blackmailing. Mailing, yes. So I suppose, I suppose uh, the question is how do we prevent other from emotionally uh, blackmailing us? I, I guess lah, I cannot clarify, but I suppose that is the question. Lah. I keep calm. Hmm. Don't argue back. Don't argue back. Uh, so I notice very often when we argue back, we try to reason, especially when the person is not ready. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work. 
basically is like the stimuli of the what is mentioned in the Dhamma Pada. Uh, we should respond to the person uh, like a crack gong, like a crack gong, patient, calm, peaceful, mindful, unperturbed, like a crack gong like that, so it won't be disturbed. Then it won't be manipulated. Very often, we are emotionally blackmailed by people uh, because we are not calm. Uh, we are not calm. Uh, then we can be easily emotionally affected. People can puppet us around. Uh, but if we are calm, relax, we cool, we do mindful grounding, uh, then people cannot let me emotionally. Okay, next question. If we are always suppressing our anger, is, isn't it bad for our health? Won't we be, won't we be, yes. able, be stepped over by other people in the society? Ah, yes. Very good question. Ah, the method I thought just now, they are not suppressing anger. Ah, they are helping us to cool the anger. Cool the anger. They are not suppressing the anger. Ah, in fact, I have uh, a few more slides about how we should express. So those method three plus five, right? the, the, the method I mentioned three plus five, right? it's more of cooling the flame of anger. Okay? There's also a few slides right? in more how we express our anger. Uh, are you okay if I show one or two slides on that? How, okay. how we express. Uh, express. Uh. Expressing anger. Ah, okay. Hmm. Communicating anger. Ah, so it's, it's, uh, that question is a very good question. Sometimes we need to communicate, especially especially the anger it towards a loved one. Ah, ah, in, in the business setting, uh, you only meet the person one off, fine. Uh, as long as we cool the flame of anger, we, we, we don't need to meet the person anymore, fine. Uh, but if the object of anger is a person very close to us, uh, then we need to know how to express. Uh, so I have uh, two formulas, two tips to share with you. One comes from Sigma Han, and the other one comes from a psychologist by the name Marshall Rosenberg. Uh, I'll go through very quickly. Uh, the one from Sigma Han, the, the style of communication, the style of communication, basically as we are talking to a person, we tell the person, I'm angry, I'm suffering. We communicate. I am angry. I'm afraid. I'm trying to overcome my anger, and I need you. I need your help. I'm angry. I'm suffering, and I need your help. Okay, can you help me? So that is a style of uh, communication. Uh, very often, when we are angry, uh, we do it the other way around. Uh, okay? We don't say we are angry. We say you make me angry. It's because of you. I'm angry. You make me suffer. You make me angry. I don't need. I don't need you in my life. Get lost, get lost. I don't need you. Uh, so that's not a skillful way. This is more a skillful way. Calm down, relax. Uh, have to calm down first. Lah. If you are not calm, uh, it's very difficult to communicate. After we have calmed down, they say, I'm suffering, I'm angry. Okay, I need your help. Please help me. So it's one way. Mm. The second way is uh, a method. Uh, there's a method called compassionate communication. Uh, this was... Uh, this was actually invented by a, a psychologist, the late Marshall, Dr. Marshall Rosenberg. Uh, so I'll give you the, the, basic, uh, the basic methods of doing it. If you want to read more, you can, you can uh, look for this book, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. Uh, sometimes it's also called compassionate communication. Uh, this is not from the Buddhist scripture, but I find that the method is consistent with what uh, the Buddha uh, teach. Basically, five methods. The first one, of course, stay calm. Okay. Second one is express how we feel, which is anger and frustration. Uh, but when we express that, that to be very specific. Say exactly what we hear and what we see. Express it. Uh, uh, um, express how we feel and say how I feel. Don't say you make me feel. Don't say you make me angry or you make me suffer. You can say how we feel. I feel angry, I feel frustrated. Over what? Uh, very specific. Say I'm angry, I'm upset. On what? Be very specific. Okay. Then we express our needs. So it's all about communication and expression. Express the needs. Uh, of course, when we express our needs, we also need to empathize the other person as well. Uh, 
So this way is a uh, is uh, being kind to ourselves. It's also to be kind to the other person as well. Uh, of course, the last one is to uh, make our request, express what we need, make our request, and willing to negotiate. Mm. I will give you the actual case scenario so that you can have a better understanding. I will give you uh, two two case scenario. So the senior first scenario, husband is upset with his wife for spending too much time at work. You get a scenario, ah. Uh, so husband is angry, upset with wife for spending too much time at work. Uh, so if we use the compassionate communication method, this will how this will be this will how the conversation sound like. Darling, when you return home from work, exactly that's observation. Uh, when you return home from work. I feel lonely. So expression of feeling. I need you to be with the family more often. Can you spend at least one evening a week with the kids and me? It's a request. I know you're busy at work and it's difficult to find time. It's an empathy component. But we really appreciate your presence. So you see the element of uh, compassion, element of wisdom. Okay. Another scenario, uh, second example. Okay. This one, the ballet wife is frustrated with her husband for not washing the dishes. Huh? Huh? Of course, the wife can practice whatever I shared, whatever the Buddha has taught, calm down, relax, cool down. Uh, because husband and wife, uh, they got to talk, uh, they got to communicate. Uh, uh, then this method becomes very useful. Uh, so what is, the not, what is the compassionate communication uh, way of uh, expressing? Uh, this is an example. Honey. It stresses me out, telling about feeling. It stresses me out when I have to clean dirty dishes after a long day of work. It's observation. I need things to be in order. Okay? It's not your problem, but it's my problem. I need things to be in order. Can you make sure they are clean before I return? So there's a request. I know you're busy too. There's an empathy component. Maybe we could set up a schedule and share a responsibility. So there's a willingness to negotiate. Yeah. So this is the compassionate communication. Yeah. So two methods for you to take home and try on how to express the anger. Uh, so you don't suppress. You get suppressed, so you get a lot of physical condition like diabetes, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke. No? Okay, next question. Dr. Pang. Uh, we've received a few questions from Facebook. Uh, I think one is related to what you just mentioned. Uh, okay, the question goes like this. Hi, Dr. Pang. Is it a good practice to just to release the anger or stress by complaining to somebody? I've experienced more relief by releasing it out. Uh, your comment, Dr. Pang? Yeah, it's okay to talk to somebody, uh, but you have to find a correct person. Uh, a correct person will respond the way I recommended just now, under, under the point on paying attention, how we can help a family member or a close friend to put out. So we need to talk to someone who can respond in that way. Uh, that is useful. Uh, but if you talk to somebody with, uh, without wisdom, without compassion, uh, the person may make things worse. Uh. Uh, for example, the person may... May, may add oil to the fire, you know. They say, oh, wow, that person, uh, yeah, terrible, uh, very, very, very terrible. Uh, yeah, I say experience, uh, also, uh, that will make things worse. Uh. Uh, make sure you choose a person who uh, know how to respond to you with wisdom and compassion. Then, no problem. Okay, uh, Dr. Pang, next question is, uh, how do we deal with the tantrums and anger outbursts in children? In uh, children, it's a little bit complex. Uh, uh, it's it, it difficult to give uh, an answer when we do not know the causes and conditions. Uh, in, in children, uh, there is a method called uh, behavioral analysis. Uh, behavioral analysis uh, it is more or less similar with the principle of causes and conditions. Uh. So when uh, a child throws tantrum, uh, that is the behavior. Throw tantrum, anger is the behavior. Uh, we want to analyze the causes and conditions behind the behavior. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm uh, integrating the Buddha's teaching of causes, condition, and the behavioral analysis in behavioral therapy. Uh, so the anger behavior, we need to analyze the causes and conditions and to solve the causes and conditions. Okay? For example, 
the problem might not be the child. The problem might be parents quarreling. Got it? Uh, uh, then we have to solve the problem of the parents. Okay? Uh, or the causes and condition could be the child doesn't know how to express certain thing. The child doesn't know how to express certain thing. Uh, then we teach the child how to express. Uh, so we analyze the behavior, find the causes and condition, and then we solve the, the problem, the causes and condition. That's my response. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I think we've received quite a number of questions in the chat. Maybe uh, one that they missed out could be uh, one from Dato Ang Chuhong, actually. He said, what do we do when you are angry with let's say the military takeover in Myanmar or say the political corruption in Malaysia? Hmm. Personally, what I remind myself is focus on what I can do. That's what I do. Uh, focus on what is within my capacity. Uh, there's a lot of injustice, a lot of imperfection, a lot of problems in the world, but not everything is within my control to change. Uh, so that's what I remind myself. Uh, so certain things that I can do, I try. Uh, if not, then I relate loving kindness. This is what I do. Uh, I notice that when I try to change things which are not within my control, I tend to get frustrated. Uh, I tend to get frustrated. Uh, 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 so to me, that is a middle way. Uh, uh, I mean, we should care, we should have loving kindness, we should have compassion, we try to reach out to help. Um, but we're also not Buddha, we're not Arasha, we're not Buddhist, or that. there are certain limitations. Uh, so try to do whatever is within our capacity. Uh, we're not within our capacity, we just relate loving kindness. Hmm? Hmm. Same things in, uh, in my clinical practice, uh, in my clinic. Uh, I can't help all. I can't help all patients. I can't help all family members. Uh, even though sometimes I know the causes and condition, I know exactly what should be done. Uh, same thing go for the political scenario. We know all the causes and condition. We know exactly what should be done. Uh, but sometimes causes condition are just not right for people for, for people to change. Same thing. We focus on what we can. The rest we read it loving kindness. Hmm. Hey. Yeah. Hmm. There's one here. How do we help someone with a psychology problem like that? The manager manage his or her anger. Dementia, is it? Yes. How to manage his or her Dementia. anger? Yes. Uh, okay, our our say most important is a uh, seek professional help. Seek professional help. Uh, try to control the dementia as much as possible. Mm. So there is, a, there is a medical treatment and medication part. Uh, of course, there's only one part of the treatment. Uh, family members can also learn ways to take care of a person with dementia. Uh, right? Family members can join a dementia support group. So they can learn how to take care of a person with dementia and they can help to minimize uh, the, the anger. Um, yeah, because simple exercise can learn as well. Like, I mean, for breathing, it's not too difficult. I mean, the breathing is not too difficult to teach. Yeah, so that's my response. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Pong, we received another question from Facebook. Uh, it says, uh, is it correct to say that our anger can also be projected from inward to outward as well? and have impact to the surrounding? Definitely. Uh, and anger is a form of energy. Uh, the, the way I look at anger, uh, anger is one energy. Sometimes I notice that uh, I, I pick up the anger energy from my patients. Uh, I notice this. I remember I said earlier, ang anger is a visitor. Anger is not part of us, you know. Uh, we, are, we all have the uh, bodhicitta, Buddha nature. Uh, so, Extending from that, anger also can be sort of channeled. We, we can sometimes, uh, we get angry. The angry is not really ours. Uh, we can actually get it from somebody. It's like sort of infected. 
Uh, so we need to understand that. Because if you don't understand, uh, sometimes we get angry with our anger. We don't understand the nature of anger. We get angry with our anger and we blame ourselves. And you know the nature of anger. Anger cannot be overcome. We get angry with our, our anger. The anger will multiply. Uh, similarly, sometimes the other way around. That one is outside come inside. Uh, but sometimes anger also can be projected. Yeah, is is from is from inside, but we project to outside. So we can be doing that to other people. Other people can be doing that to us as well. Uh, it is something like that. It's like. It's like, oh, brother Ben Sheng, why are you angry at me? Mm. Why are you angry at me? Uh, actually, you're not angry at me. It's I'm angry at you. Uh, but I said you are angry at me. Uh, so there's a form of uh, uh, projection. Yeah. yeah. So it's only when our mind is very calm, uh, we can see this kind of dynamics of anger. Uh, when our mind is not calm, uh, we're usually very reactive, you know. Uh, we try to argue with the person. Oh, I'm not angry at you. You shouldn't be angry at me. Uh, we got stuck and got caught in all those things. Uh, so calm down. And then we can see all these causes and conditions, see the dynamics, the anger, the inward go outward, outward go inward, the projection, all this. Yeah. In the Buddhist, the term is seeing all the causes and conditions, all the connections, all the causes and conditions. Now it's almost 10 p.m. We will take the last three questions. Huh? How to overcome the continued anger feeling even though already practiced the compensation method? Ah, try more methods. Sometimes one method is not enough. Ah, so go through the top, uh, go through the top, go through the slide. Uh, sometimes we have to try it out and see which method works better. And to me, that is wisdom. I shared various methods. Wisdom requires us to, to explore, to try it out in different, different situations and see which situation works better in what condition. Uh, like for me, sometimes pay no attention and just uh, focus at work on something meaningful that's better. Uh, sometimes I need more of uh, thinking, reflection, contemplation. Sometimes it's more of uh, walking meditation. Sometimes it's a uh, combination. Sometimes I have to talk to somebody. I cannot do it myself. I have to talk to somebody. Uh, sometimes you listen to the meta chanting. Uh, so I have to try it out. Hmm? When will be a suitable time for children to learn meditation? Yeah, their age and type of meditation. Oh, children can learn very, 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 very young. Uh, I suggest start with the, start with the loving kindness. Uh, if, but if we are teaching loving kindness to children, uh, we have to make it more fun. Uh. For example, the Rasa Sayang song, you can do it with uh, another practice called the butterfly hug. Uh, butterfly hug. Okay, how we do it is we use our hand to make a butterfly shape and then we hug ourselves this way. Uh -huh. mm. Then we teach the children to sing Rasa Sayang. Rasa sayang, hey, rasa sayang, sayang, hey. I may, I may, you may all be happy, happy, happy. May I, may you may all be happy, happy, happy. Okay, then teach them to take a deep breath and breathe out. So very easy to do. In fact, can teach children to do a uh, loving kindness manager before they are born. Before they are born. So mothers are uh, while carrying the baby in the womb, uh, uh, can start this kind of practice. Uh, in fact, very easy because uh, naturally uh, and uh, mothers are expecting uh, there's uh, oxytocin support. There's an uh, increase of the oxytocin hormone in the body. Uh, oxytocin is uh, responsible the feeling of uh, loving kindness, compassion, bonding, connection. Uh. Uh, so very easy for for pregnant mothers uh, uh, to practice loving kindness. Oh, practice this. While you're carrying the baby, practice this. Uh, so when I see the mothers who are expecting and having anxiety, depression, I teach this loving kindness. Uh, indirectly, I'm teaching the baby. And once the baby is out, I uh, learn to sing this song. And you want to make the baby sleep, uh, sing this song. Rasa sayang, hey, rasa sayang. Uh, and they big enough, teach them this. So start early. Start even before the baby is out. Okay, we will take the last question. Uh, doctor, you are guiding where there are two-way communication. 
how do you deal with one suffering from dementia who cannot respond to your need for cooperation? Example, please stand up or sit here. Uh, I'll say use the power of loving kindness. Use the power of loving kindness. Uh, sometimes, sometimes speech, uh, because dementia affects speech understanding. Uh, but uh, we can radiate loving kindness. Loving kindness is energy. People can feel it. Uh, so same principle, even in my clinic, uh, sometimes I don't talk. Because when you know someone is not ready, uh, you talk and talk and talk, the person cannot get it. Uh, so what I do is I radiate loving kindness. I sing the Russell Tyre song. I have certain visualization related to kindness. Uh, same thing. I do that to my patient. You can do it with your loved one with dementia. It's through the power of the energy. Uh, energy. People can feel energy, not just words. Mm -hmm. So similarly, even though we are, we are in the Zoom room, we are not physically together, but we are energetically connected. We are energetically connected. As I'm talking here, I'm sending good thoughts to you. We are energetically connected. Huh? Let's end our uh, QA session. For the last segment, we would like to invite Dr. Pang to conduct the sharing of knowledge. Dr. Pang? Hmm. Sure. Thank you. So we will recite this together. Sharing of merit. I would like to share the merits I gathered today as well as in the past with the Dewas. May they rejoice in this merit and keep an eye on me and my loved ones. I would also like to transfer this merit to my departed relatives and friends wherever they are May they be free from suffering and be happy. Aspirations. If I stray from the true path, may I never do so again. If I carelessly hurt someone today by word or deed, may I be more mindful the next time. Oh Buddha, the enlightened one, help me to set my heart right. May my actions reflect the love and compassion. By the grace of this merit that I acquired, may I never follow the foolish, but only the wise, until I attain the final goal of Nibbana. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.